Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna look at the first adventure scooter from China. This is from DY Moto and it's sold in Europe under the Daytona brand and it's called the Daytona Mista 150. It comes also in a 125cc flavor but this is the 150, the big cojones version with a liquid cooled 150cc engine and 16 and a half horsepower and the looks of an adventure scooter. Now, I have ridden the Mista before, a couple of months ago, but now we got it in the country, I can take a proper detailed look at it and show you exactly what's what. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and take it from front wheel to back wheel as we usually do and see all the little details that DY Moto has decided to put on this little scooter. Starting up front, we have a windshield and Although it may be small, it is a little bit adjustable. If we pull on these tabs and push it up, we can get a more acute angle. It helps out a little bit, not too much, but it's better than nothing. A full complement of LED lights, front and high and low beam, daytime running lights, and also indicators are LED. We have the reminiscence of an adventure bike with a very small beak here to give you the idea of an adventure bike. Now, this is a pretty nice design element of the scooter. It's something that goes a bit unnoticed, but if you look at it closely, it does resemble a little bit of the GSs of the world, the adventure style of motorcycle with this little beak here. Then again, be below it, we have a regular size fender we have a 14 inch front wheel with a dual piston caliper on the front brake disc, full ABS, front and rear ABS. And also it comes with some pretty knobbly off-road inspired tires. And I have ridden this thing on grass and uh, it, ho it holds its own. The, to the tires really hold their own. They have decent amounts of grip on dirt, on grass. You could actually off-road this thing if you really wanted to. Coming around to the side, we have our fuel tank right here in the middle. It's an almost 10 liter fuel tank. It says 9.3 liters. We have our floorboards. We have an inclined position to our feet if we want to stretch our feet forward, but there isn't quite a lot of room here. It's more of a city scooter size. We have our center stand and our side stand. We have our passenger foot pegs, which are metal. Also on the back, we have twin rear shocks with remote reservoir gas struts. So this is a pretty advanced suspension for just a regular scooter, but it does help it get pretty good handling off-road and soak up the bumps really well. Now this may help off-road, but then again, if you're riding through the city, city streets are usually bumpy. So that may come as an advantage on bumpy city streets. And on the rear, we have a 13 inch rear wheel with a single piston caliper brake disc. Moving around to the back, we have our luggage rack. We have our LED rear lights. Also on the front, everything is LED. I forgot to mention that. We have our turn signals. Again, the gas strut suspension, our exhaust pipe, and grab rails for the passenger, passenger foot pegs. The seat for the passenger is not the biggest in class, but then again, it's big enough for a passenger riding through the city. It's not a big problem. Now, under seat storage is decent. You can open the under seat storage by pushing on the ignition, waiting for a couple of seconds and the seat pops. Or we could use the keyless. If we press the middle button, just hold it and the seat pops. And this is your under seat storage. Now, to be honest, I don't think you could fit a helmet here because as you can see, it's not very deep. But you do have these struts here. If you have a helmet with a D-ring, you can hang your helmet on the side and use this as regular storage space. Moving around to the dashboard area, we have our ignition. To activate it, you do get keyless, so you don't have to take the key out of the pocket. But to activate it, you press once, it comes to life. If you wanna open the seat, you hold down for two seconds and the seat pops. And this is how you put the ignition. And if you wanna open the fuel, just turn it here and press. And that's our fuel door. 
Also here we have our USB compatible with Quick Charge 3.0. Moving around to the left side, we have a non-lockable storage box, but inside we can have we have a kill switch for the scooter and also a 12 volt plug with a cigarette lighter. Also, there is another switch inside here that would allow the scooter to run with the side stand down. In terms of controls, we have on the right side a kill switch, a ninja start button, hazard lights, adjustable brake levers, both on both sides. On the left side, we have our horn. We have our turn signal indicators, high and low beams, and flash the brights. A regular motorcycle style handlebar, a bit on the thick side, but you could mount your phone or whatever you want to mount on a regular handlebar. A full seven inch LCD screen, which shows us quite a lot of information. So we have outside temperature here, we have our clock here, we have our rev counter, we have our speed, engine water temperature, because it is water cooled. We have our fuel gauge, we have our trip meter A and trip meter B, and our total odometer. And also a few lights on the side like ABS, check engine light, high and low beams and the key light. In terms of riding position, it's a pretty small scooter. So if we get on it, we do have room. There is decent amount of room for your legs. But if you want to put your feet forward, you have a little bit of space, but not too much. Uh, I like the handlebars, they're nice and tall. I like the dash because it's very easy to read what's on displayed on the dash. And in terms of height, I can easily flat foot the scooter without any kind of problem. And like all scooters, weight is low, so it's easy to manage. But we'll talk more about the riding as we take it around the yard. Ah, finally riding the Mista on my own home turf now it's hard to explain the sensation because if you just look at the specs this is just a regular 150 cc scooter with about 16 horsepower the weight is about 150 160 kilograms 10 liter fuel tank everything is normal but when you ride it you do get a bit of sense that something is different because the suspension is a lot more compliant than regular scooters you do have a bit of extra ride height but you can't really feel the extra ride height but it is there and uh, the tires on pavement don't make any noise they feel great they feel normal but every time you I get on it I kind of get a sense of uh, I want to do stuff like this, like, yeah, come on, bit of off-roading, proper adventure style. And now this is where the ground clearance is coming into its own. <laughs> there we go. You know, it, ju it just pulls on you to have fun and to search for the dirt like I don't need pavement I'll just go wherever I want to go just ride it wherever I want to ride it dirt no problem tarmac that's normal and uh, when you're done messing around in the dirt you actually get to realize that this is a pretty decent scooter it's very light on its feet it's very nimble, very maneuverable. You can chuck it into a corner, no problem. The suspension is very compliant. That's what I like. And the bumps that we have here in the yard, the suspension is very, very compliant. So easy to hoon around here. Because of the bumps, most motorcycles or scooters rattle my teeth out. But this thing, yeah, sure, no problem. And on this gravel section, so much fun to actually give it some gas and let the back end step out just a little bit and when you're back on tarmac you can lean it into a bend the maneuverability is excellent and let's see the power decent power decent acceleration and in terms of braking the ABS works a treat you have full front and rear ABS 
the tires are a little bit compromised on tarmac because they don't have quite as much grip as a premium grade tire but once again if you want to do a bit of off-road a bit of knobliness to the tires is what's required to give you that extra grip when you're going off the beaten track I actually don't feel a difference when I'm going from tarmac to grass and back to tarmac <laughs> it's quite fun to be honest we can either go on tarmac or we can just ride it through the grass yeah boy come on <laughs> it just wants to have fun this is a fun little scooter the engine is eager i would have liked a little bit more immediacy from the transmission the engine has power the transmission has that cvt delay that some people have managed to work out of their transmission but dy moto still hasn't figured it out how to make it more more urgent more immediate in the way the power is delivered because if you give it throttle the engine revs you wait for about half a second and then it goes i think the transmission needs to be tightened up a little bit because uh, the i like the engine it makes a great noise it has power it is quite a lot of fun for just a 150 cc it, it's very pokey but like I said here, the transmission is a bit laggy. We're going constant 32. Full. It goes, but it does have a bit of a delay. That's the thing with it. It's something you can get used to it and get on the throttle a bit earlier. But I know it can be better. It can be made better and uh, that's a small minus for me right now. But that's just nitpicking because this is still an awesome scooter the handlebars are nice and tall it's very comfortable maneuverable everything power for days for city riding 16 horsepower is more than enough we have full abs as you can see the scooter is extremely stable easy to control it with your feet balance it with your legs an awesome piece of machinery and at under 4,000 euros in most markets somewhere between three and a half to four thousand euros it's a very very good price for something of this caliber really good price so if you like me enjoy your scooters but you also enjoy a bit of off-roady you might you might want to check this thing out because it's currently coming out on the market stocks are rolling in it is for sale and there are plenty of them in stock most dealers are just about now receiving stock it's a good option for summer of 2022 if you want to do a bit of exploring have a bit of fun it's a good option at a very reasonable price that has been it for the daytona mista if we do register it i'm gonna do a riding video on the street but currently it doesn't have any registration but until then thank you all so much for watching for liking and subscribing again if you want to support the channel you can check out the amazon affiliate links down below and until next time guys take care out there and ride safe goodbye <music>